Welcome to this Badminton Europe webinar. My name is Rasmus Beck and I'm the communication manager here at the Badminton Europe. Today we will be talking about planning and executing your communication. Welcome to this BEC webinar. Today's topics will be how to build a communicating organization, how to plan your organization, event communication and local communication. And uh, let's just uh, jump to it because the most important thing is that you have a very clear plan. Uh, what is it that you actually want to do with your communication and who are you targeting? Uh, how much and how often should you actually communicate? That's also one of the things that we will be touching uh, today and which is also very important for you to have in your plan. Responsibility, of course, is a big thing. Who is actually leading your communication? Who's taking care of whatever purpose uh, you might actually find? Who is going to be uh, the leader of your communication and who is going to provide the content? Um, delivering content, creating content is equally important as the leading part. And remember, most of you are a bigger team than just one person. So if you want to actually make a good communication, you need to figure out who's doing what, when and how. A clear plan needs a purpose. So what is the main purpose of your communication? That's one of the things that you need to ask yourself while you're building your communicating organization. You need to figure out who are the target. What's your target? Are there more than one? Are we talking about one target only? Most probably not. Uh, most communication have more than one target and your organization for sure has more than one target for your communication because there are different targets for different products. The unknown target group is the important one and we will come back to that one because that's quite important because there's always one you do not know who will be your target. The frequency, that's a question I get asked a lot. How often should we actually publish something on our social media? And the easy answer is, it depends on the manpower you have in your organization. If you have six employees, you have it's fair to say that you need to produce more than if you're one, and vice versa. And content is not equal on all platforms, and that's also re uh, important to remember, and I will also come back to that. Because if you have some kind of content, Produced is not necessarily meaning that it actually goes on your social media. So let's come back to that later. The purpose of your communication, as I said, was what do you actually want? Do you want to have likes on your social media? Do you want to share information with your stakeholders? Do you want to give away free stuff? That could be a racket, that could be tickets, that could be basically whatever. Do you want to entertain? Or do you actually want to sell a product? Or do you want all of it? That's the questions you need to figure out. What, what is it that's the most important for us? And there's not something that is the most important because it depends on the platform. If you have a website, yes, it might be important for you to share information, but the same information doesn't necessarily go to your Facebook or to your Instagram or to your TikTok if you have a TikTok. I assume that most of you don't and I'm not saying that you should, but you just need to remember a different platform for a different purpose. And remember that content is not for everyone. Nobody cares about everything. That's the brutal honesty here. Uh, I might not care about something that was posted on Instagram, but my sister might. Your best friend might care a lot about what's happening on the, on the website in terms of whatever news that you can produce, but you might not see yourself. It's not for everyone and you need to accept that. And it's okay to not please everybody. You need to know and you're nice to know. It's not necessarily the same thing. That's also why prioritizing is important. If you are a small organization, you look at the need to know and you figure out what is the absolutely most important thing that we want to communicate and then you put all your effort into that. There will always be a nice to know. And the nice to know is what actually can give you the easy wins on your social media. It could be uh, something that pleases the few but you need to figure out what are you actually going to do. And remember, content is not for everyone. You need to prioritize. So a few takeaways here. You do not only have one purpose around your communication. Accept that everything is not relevant for everybody. Target groups can be difficult to handle because you will have a different target group for every single activity that you have. I will give you a few examples now. For instance, for a coach course, who is the target group? for a coach course. That's of course the coaches. 
But could it also be players who want a more educated coach? Could it also be parents for younger kids who want to coach their kids or their friends of the kids? Could it be the clubs? Yes, it could. Could it also be the regions? Yes, it could. Meaning that just by a simple brainstorm here, I found at least five different target groups. Not saying that you need to pick one of these because they are, in my opinion, equally important. Because if you are a coach, a coach caused by the name of what it actually is, the activity, is actually aware that, okay, this is for me. So maybe actually put an effort in to say, okay, you're a player, do you want a better coach? He has the chance to actually attend this activity. Or the parents or whoever that could be. Or could it be everyone else? That's the question up to you. And I'm sure that if you are working in, within this every, every single day, you know way better than I do what could be the target group. And, and sometimes it's important to find that unknown, as I said before. The unknown target, that's the one where you actually make the big difference because everybody can figure out that for clubs and for coaches, a promotion of a coach course is quite important. But what if you could actually enroll more people into your course if you find that secret unknown target? Let's take another example. A summer camp. For the players, of course. For parents, Yes, because if you don't get the, uh, the parents uh, go for it, the player will for sure not go if we're talking about a kid here. What about the coaches? They want to send their players to the camp. Makes perfectly sense. These three are the easy ones. Clubs and regions, the same. What about teachers? Could it be a good idea for a teacher in his gym class to say, if you want to play badminton this summer, you actually have the opportunity to join this uh, national camp, this local camp, this, uh, the, the, the club camp, whatever camp that could be. I think it would actually be quite interesting to see an approach to teachers. And what about siblings to players? Let's just be honest here. Siblings do not get along all the time. Would it be cool to send the little brother or the little sister on a badminton camp so you could have your parents for yourself for a week? I think a lot of kids would actually agree on this um, and that's nothing to do with not loving your siblings but it might actually be a way to actually also say hey mom and dad couldn't it be cool for Pete to go on this camp this again just six ideas from the top of my head and I'm sure that you can find even more key takeaways on uh, on the uh, target groups there's always more than one and remember that when you communicate because it it actually matters on how you communicate because the way you write to a coach is not the same way you write to a parent, to a teacher, to a sibling, to a player and whoever might be in that group. And that could be basically everybody. So find your target and fit your communication and your organization and spend your resources of, of what you find most important. The frequency is of course also important and if you look at the screen right now you will see uh, a lot of different platforms uh, and I'm sh pretty sure you most um, know, know a lot of these. Of course the, the top one Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, most people know that TikTok is getting more and more popular but this is actually just to show that you have a lot of different options uh, and your frequency in your communication all comes down to how much manpower do you actually have. Because if you have two people working within communication, you can set a goal of using this and that platform. If you have one, it might be fewer. If you have six employees, it will, of course, be different. Uh, if you have one who's totally uh, dedicated only to do social media work, it's also fair to say that he, she should handle more than one platform. But five platforms might be, enough, uh, be way too much, just to take an example here. The well-known platforms for, for you guys are for sure the website. Uh, people are involved in the sport will always go to your website because they know where to go and find their information. Uh, these are the people you already know. Facebook, that's for everybody. You know that. I'm sure that 99% of you guys are actually on Facebook and I would be surprised if the last 1% uh, haven't heard about Facebook before. Instagram used to be for the younger generation, but that generation is growing older. Uh, and that's typically for uh, the social media. Facebook was also for the younger ones in the beginning, before we had Snapchat, before we had Instagram, before we had TikTok. Then the adults joined, then the grandparents joined. Now we see that they actually also a move towards the parents on Instagram. So this generation is growing older and that's exactly why TikTok and Twitter came in. Twitter is for the news freaks. 
And there's no doubt that if you are on Twitter, you are there to get the fast news and maybe comment on it. Uh, and that's for the freaks um, and positively, of course. YouTube, that's for the video fans. Uh, that's all you get on YouTube, that's video. And of course, TikTok, that's the younger generation's tool right now. But again, you will see maybe sooner than later that the old generation will also adapt to TikTok because uh, TikTok has another tool, uh, has another option to actually show uh, something that you do not see on the other platforms. If you haven't seen what TikTok is, I would recommend that you take a look, uh, maybe just to be inspired on what kind of content you can actually produce also to hit a younger audience. Uh, download the TikTok app, take a look. Uh, we are not involved with TikTok, of course, so so that and, and or any other platform. So so there's there's no advert in this, but but go take a look, find some inspiration. That goes for every single platform. Uh, inspiration is never a bad thing. But the purpose of the platform that's where it's important because the website that's for information sharing. And when I say information sharing, it's not only like dates and this is us and uh, remember to sign up. It's also news. It's whatever actually happened within your organization, uh, activities, and so on. Facebook is basically a link converter, and that's everybody's platform, so to speak. Everybody's on Facebook, and it's a good way to actually get a lead into your platform, if that's being a link, if that's being a picture, if that's being a video or a graphic or whatever you can come up on. Instagram, that's basically funny and cozy and likable content. Uh, there's nothing dramatic about Instagram. It's... Uh, it's the platform where you scroll down when you have 10 minutes uh, just to see some nice pictures and some nice videos. Maybe also a lighter information channel, which could be, for instance, uh, wow, we have a summer camp this summer, uh, check out our website, something similar to that. You cannot link within the text of Instagram, and yes, you do it in the story. Um, so, so it's not a link convert in the same way as Facebook. Twitter, as I said, news and breaking, that's all the purpose of, of, of Twitter. Uh, YouTube, that's a video on demand and streaming. Uh, that's basically what you get there. And TikTok, that's a fun way to waste time, basically. Uh, of course, it's also a way to, to put in advertisements for, for personal branding and, and such. But most people use it for, for basically for entertainment. So, how to use the different platforms? For instance, Facebook. Tell your community what you want to do and what you're doing and let them be inspired. Uh, show is always better than tell. And I'll come back to that over and over and over again. Because video, pictures and graphics works better than text on Facebook due to the algorithm of Facebook. Algorithm, that's a fluffy word. It's basically a machine who decides what, can you, what are we actually going to show the people who follow you. And the more people interact, the more the fans interact with your content, the more it actually gets popular, meaning that the algorithm open, opens up for more people to actually watch it. And you make contests on Facebook and one out of one is basically working good. Uh, people like to get something for free and that they can win something and Facebook is the perfect channel to that. That's also creating engagements, but be aware, do not make like clickbaits, do not do something that you do not cannot promise, promise don't, don't promise anything that you cannot do and, 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 and be aware that if you just do a content, a contest all the time, uh, you will also be punished by that from, uh, from the algorithm. Instagram, as I said, likable content, funny and cozy. Uh, that's also, my advice would also be if you have limited resources for, for your Facebook, or so for your Instagram, let the youngest play. In the federations, we have a lot of young people involved that could be players, that could be a volunteer. And if you are 19, between 18, 19 and 25, you know more about Instagram than most people uh, who's older than 30. Sorry to say, I'm over 30 myself, so I think it's fair to say. Let the youngsters play. And video, again, is the key. It's better to show than to tell. The website, all information you have is relevant. Because who are going to visit your website? That's people who know badminton in your local community. News motivates people to come back to a page. Of course, it also motivates people to come back when they know that they can sign up for something. They need to go to a tournament. They want to know when is, uh, when is tickets available, whatever that could be. But that's not something that you can actually make every single day. So news, which you can create every single day based on whatever activity, whatever player, whatever it could be, 
uh, could actually be an inspiration for, for you to actually motivate people to come back and prioritize your content. Uh, better do a one article per day which is 100% correct and right than do two on a 50% level. YouTube streaming and, uh, and VOD video on demand uh, for instance also things from the archive uh, YouTube is a channel who uh, has been put to bed by experts for quite some time but it still continues to run and it's actually running pretty well at the moment so, so I, I'm not going to put that one to bed for sure so, uh, so I would also consider to have, to have video content on YouTube but I would say start on the Facebook, start with Instagram and of course your website which you already have Frequency is also a question here which I, I, I get a lot. So how much should we actually publish? How often should we publish? When should we publish? And I'll try to give you some guidelines. These are not fixed rules because it really depends on when are your users online, how does the algorithm treat your stuff and what are you producing and how often. But a few ground rules here based on the experience of Badminton Europe uh, webinars I have attended, uh, spoken to Facebook myself to, 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 to try to get more knowledge around how can you actually publish and, and, and be successful uh, as, as many times as possible. Um, one to two daily posts on uh, Facebook, one to three daily posts on Instagram plus story. Uh, website, of course, there's no limit and uh, one to three daily YouTube videos. That are the ground rule when you do not have events. I'm talking about day-to-day -day use, daily use here. So it's actually not that much, but you also need to know that, for instance, if you publish six posts on Facebook, your follower will not see the number six because the algorithm will not allow people to actually see post number six because you only get five posts unless you have marked a page as a favorite and to be shown first in your feed. That's the only way you actually get more than just five posts in your feed every single day. That's, need to, uh, that, that, that's actually good knowledge to have. Because the algorithm will think that you are spamming your fans. And that's the only thing they do not want, want that spamming. Spamming and fake news. That's the two things that Facebook fear the most and, who, and which two things which they fight the most. Key takeaways regarding the frequency, choose a platform which is right for your organization and do not use all platforms, as I said, rather two platforms at 100% than four on 50%. And use the stars to promote your content and your platform. You all have a local player who is better than everyone else. You always have a player who is the one that everybody wants to be. Why not use this guy or girl as the ambassador for your platforms. It doesn't cost you anything. She's involved in your organization anyway. He is for sure one of these guys who has a lot of followers in your local community and everybody knows him. Why not use him? And content can be used on multiple platforms but not on the same day. And to be more specific on this, if you create a graphic, if you create a video, if you write an article, it's fair to put it on your website and on Facebook on the same day. But you never go Facebook and Instagram on the same day. You never go uh, TikTok and Instagram on the same day and whatever you want to do. The good thing about this is you actually have double amount of content. So why not use it again? And an article can be published twice. A graphic can be published twice. Just not within the same week or maybe not even in the same month. Uh, don't be afraid to reuse, reuse your material which you have already uh, provided your, your users once because they might not have seen it. Planning your communication is of course also important and you need to ask yourself a few questions when you actually start to plan your communication. So who do we communicate to? That's who is the target group. What are we trying to sell? And by sell I don't mean we want to sell a racket, we want to sell a shuttle, we want to sell air badminton. No. It could also be we want to sell that people should actually attend our forum or they should attend our summer camp, or they should actually try to play badminton. That's also a product to sell. On which platform or platforms do we want to communicate? That's the third question of yours. And the fourth is, how do we communicate on each platform? Because that also depends on what platform do you actually use. And who is doing what? So we need 
somebody to take the responsibility of actually saying, you do this, you do this. And the people in charge of the areas, they of course also execute. And when are we beginning our communication? Because that's actually also a big, big thing and a big question I get a lot of time. When do we start and when do we finish? Your communication plan is one of the tools who can actually help you a lot on a day-to-day -day basis, but also when you have, for instance, new employees, when you have uh, new ideas or whatever that could actually be. So you need to include your guidelines on how you communicate in your organization. And you need to figure out how do we actually communicate within each area within our organization and what do we do around each single activity that we have. You need a task of actors. Who is doing what? That's crucial because if you don't know who's doing what, there's for sure a lot of people doing nothing. And you'll need to list your target audience. Who are you aiming at? Here is an example of uh, what could actually be described. This is from the communication plan of Babbage to Europe around our Facebook. How do we actually want to act on our Facebook? This is our Instagram. How do we use the Instagram of, yours, of ours? This is how we cover the BC circuit, elite circle, juniors, and so on. How do we actually work with that on a day-to-day -day basis? It's just a short description, but it helps a lot. If I go, for instance, to Belgium International, then I know, okay, this is how I do this. And I know that if my intern is going, this is how she has to do this. So everybody will be on the same page on how to use the platform and how also to cover the event. This is a circuit. It could be something else. But this is, for instance, also the circuit where you can actually see what is listed and what do we need to produce when we are traveling. This could be used for every kind of activity, for every kind of tournament. For instance, this is a piece of the plan regarding board of directors meeting. All of you have a board of directors and you need to figure out, do we want to do anything around the meetings? Is it important for us? If yes... This could be an inspiration. If it's not important for you, all good. It's all up to you. Where do you want to spend your resources? This is a coach education level one course. How do we act around that? Some of you might have coach courses yourself. Some of you might even send people to this kind of coach course. If you send somebody, how do we actually cover that in your, within your organization? That's some of the things that you need to sit down and figure out. What do we do during a year? And how do we actually want to cover that? This is an example of a coverage plan for All England. That could be your local tournament. That could be a summer camp. That could be your forum. It could be basically whatever. The most important thing is that you know what to do and you know who's doing what. On a day-to-day -day basis, when we cover tournaments, everybody knows what we are doing. Somebody are working from home at the office some are on site to do something else and might be even two people on site or two people at home. It really comes down to how to be prioritized. The communication calendar, that's the second tool and also one of your main tools not to miss anything because that's the tool that keeps everybody up to date. This is just an example. This is made in an Excel sheet. Is it perfect? No. Is it useful? Absolutely. Because here we see the list of what is actually happening which are in, uh, relevant and interesting for Badminton Europe and who's taking care of what on which platform. Use it as an inspiration if you like. This is an example for Christmas. Is it tough to actually produce content for Christmas? Yes. Do we need a plan for it? Yes. Do we have somebody who's on holiday? Of course, because Christmas is holiday season. But we know what's happening and sometimes we need to be creative. So use this as an inspiration too. And I'm not saying that you should copy this. You need to figure out what do you want to do and what do your fans like to watch. So you need to also measure and figure out what do they actually want to see on which platform. And I will, I will promise you, you will not be successful every time. Nobody are. So key takeaways are a good planning is the key to success. A clean message is who is doing what. You need a clean message around your organization so everybody's on the same page knowing who's doing what, and how, and when. Details are the cornerstones here. The more details you put in your plan, the easier it is to execute.
A lot of you guys have events on a regular basis. That could be big events like a national championship. That could be smaller events, which could be, for instance, a summer camp for kids, or it could be whatever para event, or whatever it actually is actually relevant. But communication around your events is equally important. And I would like to actually break it up to three parts of the communication. One is called before the events, one is during the events, and one is after the events. And let's take it step by step, because they are actually equally important. Before the events, it's important that you ask yourself, what is the most important message we want to send to the target group that we have? And when do we start the communication of ours? Creating a communication plan and a communication uh, calendar around the event will help you a lot. I will promise you that. Um, the plan will make sure that you do not miss anything. And uh, the calendar is also a way to execute and also get it more into the bigger perspective to make sure that, okay, on this day we do this, on this day we do that. During your event is uh, basically who is doing what. Because you need to figure out who is doing different tasks and, 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 and make sure that you as an organizer maybe don't need to think about that. And stick to the communication plan and the calendar. You made a plan for a purpose. If you made a plan, stick to it. After the event, it's of course important to figure out how do we wrap this up. The wrap up part should always already be uh, deal with in the in the planning phase, the planning stage of the, of the, of this communication stage, because before the event you know when it's done, so you also need to know how do you want to wrap it up. But equally important is what is the most important message to send here? Is that we are returning next year or thanks for coming or thanks for donating or for whatever purpose that could be. But the absolutely most important, when do we shut down the communication? And do we shut it down at all? Because when you start an event, you know everything is happening. But when you finish the event, you already know that you will have a new event at some point. It doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be the same one. It doesn't need to be a summer camp advertising for a new summer camp. It could be a summer camp actually providing information about a coach course or an autumn camp or whatever that could be. So when do we start the communication again? That's crucial because you need to figure out how can we actually benefit from the people who already know our activity to actually drag them into the next one. So the key messages here are what are you trying to sell? Remember that you always have a product to sell. A product is again not only like buy this racket, buy these tickets. It's also join this course, join this activity, or basically, do you want to play badminton? We are here for you. Do not assume that people know your product. For instance, if I'm 33 and I've been playing for 15 years, I might never have thought about coaching. But now I have a kid and she wants to play badminton. And wouldn't it be cool for me if I could coach her? I think it could, but, but I've never thought about it. So introducing products to people in different states of life is very, very important because what you want to know when you're 15, 25 and 35, that's not the same. And time is valuable. I have 24 hours a day. I work eight hours a day. I sleep eight hours a night. That means that I have not that much time left. And if I want to spend time with my family, with my friends, I need some good arguments that actually I should actually quit my friends on Tuesday night to do something else. Or that I should not go with my brother and my sister to somewhere in, in, in my summer holiday because I should actually spend one week of my three weeks vacation with you guys. So you need to tell people why is it so important that you spend your time or your money with us. And tell people that you exist. Of course a lot of fans know in your local community that you exist but it's never bad to get a reminder. There are so much competition around people's attention today. For instance, your local tennis club will for sure tell them that tennis is cool, it can be played outdoor. Okay, cool, but now we have air badminton that it can also be played outdoor. It's never bad to tell people that you exist also when you have new initiatives. And you need to love your product. Because if you do not love your product, why should I love it as a customer? The timeline of your communication is when you start your communication. And that's, of course, the key. And my advice is, do never start your communication no later than one month before a ticket sale if you have a ticket sale. You need to make people aware. And that same goes for a deadline. You don't need to put in 
uh, your communication two days before a deadline if you want people to attend. Because as you know, planning is everything. And why not tell people two months ahead that you actually have something cool happening in six months, but they have to sign up in two. Oh, and why not remind them in one month and in one week and in one day? The more reminders you put out, the bigger the chance is actually that you have people attending or buying or selling or whatever you want to do with your product. The coverage have to be no later than one month before the event if you have an event. You need to make people aware. You need to make people know who, who are going to attend, where we're going to play. Why is it again a good, time to, a good idea to spend time with us? And frequency, again, they, it demands on the manpower that you have within your organization. I brought a few examples on the key questions your communication could answer just to help you on a bit. Uh, so what is the benefit from the customer? That's one of the questions you can ask and you need to find an answer to that. What can we offer you that you cannot get anywhere else? Our product is unique because if you cannot answer this one, your product is simply not unique and then you need to figure out how to make it unique. Who is instructing and uh, what do they bring? That's also a way to verify your product. Same goes for who has previ previously attended. That's also a a, a, a way to verify that our product is actually pretty good because he she attended last year and he she will be presenting something or whatever that could be so key takeaways for planning your communication is to actually make a plan for your communication have a clean message to send and remember that the minute your event is finished the planning of the next one begins and if possible and if you have the time and the resources it's even better to actually plan before the current event is actually done. Choosing the right platform is not necessarily very easy. So when you have to choose the right platform, again, it's better to have a few which you are 100% dedicated to than to have a lot of platforms where you're actually not dedicated at all. And you need to think streaming, you need to think video. Video is a must here because Algorithm of social media loves video. Video is what people interact the most on, unless you actually have resources to also create graphical design. So my suggestion when you have to choose the right platform is that you of course have a website. You need to have a website where people can find the information that they're looking for. I would suggest that everybody has a Facebook and an Instagram and if you have enough content for it, I would suggest that you also have a YouTube channel. But put your effort into the first three, that will be for sure my recommendation. When to post on social media is not necessarily very easy. One of the rules are when things are happening, it's always good to publish because that actually shows activity. Or if you don't have any live events running, then you need to figure out when are your users online. You can go in on your Facebook page in your insights where you can find this graphic of when do we actually have all the people online. We also have a few rules around this and here it might be a little difficult to see but the dark blue uh, squares are when people are mostly online, meaning the middle of the day. Uh, so if you can publish between 9 and 4, that's actually the best possible way. And as you can see, Monday Saturday and Sunday, most people are not that much online. It's in the middle of the week where people are, sorry to say, bored at work, bored at school, in the train, uh, commuting to work, uh, or whatever they could, actually be do they could actually be doing during the week. That's when they are active on social media. And lunch break is never a bad timing. What to publish on your social media platform is a question I receive a lot. And uh, there's a few ground rules on, on what you can actually publish. Uh, for instance, on the Facebook, one daily stream is enough if you have it. Two to five interviews during your event is also fine. Uh, one photo gallery, that could actually be two or one big one, which you update along the way. And one to two articles, which gives five to ten posts per day at an event. For Instagram, it's more or less the same. One to three photo galleries, at least five pictures in these. Uh, highlight videos, one to three of these. And again, short interviews can also be used in, in the Instagram TV. And story with no less than five posts uh, are also recommended. And these uh, numbers are based on the experience of Badminton Europe, but also from other sports, sports organizations uh, and also from, from speaking to, to Facebook and Instagram about this. 
on your website all the interviews you want can be published all the articles you want and daily streams or stream a single stream or multiple streams there's no limitation on your website you need to remember the website is yours nobody's punishing you by algorithm on your website uh, if people want information about a, a current activity they need to know that they can always go to your website and get whatever they want and whatever they need same goes actually for YouTube there's no such as a punishment for, for algorithms so you have unlimited live streams highlights and interviews so far away if you have an, uh, a YouTube channel for, for your events. Social media content can be a tricky one and of course it also demands on the manpower that you have and the creativity you have and also the skills of course that you have. But uh, remember social media loves video as we do. Uh, I'm sure that at least one of you saw a video today uh, on your social media which you actually liked or disliked. Uh, the most important thing is that you actually saw it. And you do not need to be, for instance, Sky Sport or ESPN to produce a, a video. And you don't need to make them long. Um, and you might not even need to actually produce the videos yourself. Because sharing video content is actually also a good way to actually uh, get some video content into your platforms. Uh, Facebook cross-posting, one thing is you can also use as a member association. Uh, member association. I would actually uh, like to, to point that out. And if you don't know how to use this, please watch the webinar about how to, to influence and use the buttons on your platforms where we talked about the uh, Facebook cross-posting. Or basically you just Google and that's also a way to, to figure that out. This is an example on how you can do live streaming or video on demand. This is basically all it takes. It's an iPhone, it's a tripod, it's an amount for an amount for the uh, for the iPhone, which is basically the mount of a selfie stick, if some of you remember that one, and a, a microphone and a cable. That's basically all you need to know to make video content. This what what you can see is an interview, of course, but this could also be live streaming. Sometimes it does need more than that. Uh, power bank might be useful though, because it actually takes quite a lot of battery from your phone to to live stream and to video broadcast. So. But this is how easy it can actually be done. And this is the way we do it when we travel and we interview at Badminton Europe. Link to your articles is also a good, uh, good idea. Uh, it's a link converter. Facebook, for instance, you cannot do the same on Instagram, unfortunately, unless you use it in your story, which I would actually recommend that you do. Uh, but, but linking to your website is never a bad thing. You will see that the reach is not that high, but that's because, of course, Facebook does not like that you actually motivating people to leave their platform. Takeovers, why not let the best players be your ambassador? Uh, they know their sport. Uh, this is just an example. It's Selena Peek, the uh, European Games winner from the Netherlands. She took, made a takeover for, for Badminton Europe uh, at a tournament where she was playing. Uh, why not uh, use the, the people who are actually part of your activity? That's not necessarily just a tournament. That could be whatever. Why not use their knowledge and, and their way to actually uh, to, to to actually promote your event news you can use is always good uh, this is an example on um, how to watch something on the television it could also be for instance if you are a kid on a summer camp useful information for the parents if they want to send a letter or a snack basket or whatever that could be a new racket if that's needed uh, these are news you can use uh, these are actually quite uh, working quite well uh, on social media too uh, star highlighting. This is more specific for, uh, for instance, for for tournaments. Or again, if you have a, a well-known coach, if you have a well-known player who attended some of your activities pre activity previously, it's not a bad idea to highlight that he she was actually part of of this. Uh, Use the star to to uh, to promote your product. There's nothing bad with that. Social media campaigns and, and commercials, I'm not going to dig deep into that, um, but, but of course a boost can be a good idea if, if you want to communicate to, to a small area of people and campa campaigns are better if you want to target a more specific audience, but, but you need to know that uh, you get a lot for 100 euros, but an advert is an advert. Uh, you, you ne they, they, they don't promise you anything and an advert can never promise you anything. And, and my suggestion would be if this is interesting for you, you Google uh, Facebook adverts, Instagram adverts, which is basically handled by the same uh, backend on the web uh, website, 
they for sure want you to spend the mo your money on, on their tools so they have a perfect guide to uh, to this so if if so many uh, campaigns are, are relevant for you guys i would actually uh, recommend that you you google for for more information on this uh, a few do's and don'ts you can do most things but uh, please do never use photos or videos which you're not allowed to and if you do not know if you're allowed to share a picture or to basically you can always share a picture but to download a picture and upload it on a different platform you need to ask the people who actually published the photo or the video in the very beginning uh, if you are allowed to to do so uh, otherwise you will actually violate the copyright and same goes for music do never use music you're not allowed to uh, there's a lot of copyright free music uh, on the uh, on the best uh, on the best platform where you can find it and that's the internet and um, again never only publish text you need to attach a photo at least because if you only publish text uh, the algorithm does not like it and uh, it doesn't look very good either so a few key takeaways about the event planning communication the number of platforms is all about manpower and it's all about skills and know-how and you need to be creative but you don't need to actually figure out everything yourself if you see something funny if you see something nice it's okay to copy an idea and make it your own uh, no, nobody will, will blame you for that because 99% of all the content that you will see on the internet is not made in the very beginning from the per, uh, of the per people who actually publish it. They also got inspired in the very beginning, so, so can you be. Think video and think engaging, that's important because that's, uh, that's the way that you actually get the best reach. Local communication is important because that's the way where you can actually reach out to the clubs the regions, the players, the parents, whoever is actually interesting in badminton, and that's also including the media, because you need to remember that you know everything. You are the key ambassador of badminton in your country. That is not badminton Europe, that's you guys, because you know your community, and you know the media too. You know who is interesting in badminton on a daily basis, and that's why local communication is important. You need to make sure that you know the stakeholders of yours. So you need to figure out who are the clubs and who are the regions that we, are, that we would like to communicate to and who's the person responsible for the communication within the clubs and the regions. Uh, and what kind of information do they actually need from you? You need to remember that you are a service for these guys. But it's also a way to actually get your content out to the broader audience. So you also need to figure out how do you get the clubs and the regions and whoever might be interesting for you to actually publish the content that you are providing. For instance, for external media, that's another thing because you need to think about that the biggest broadcast is not necessarily the best option. To be fair here, badminton is not the number one sport in most countries in Europe. Football is a big sport. Tennis is a big sport for some. Ice hockey, handball, you name it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no airtime for badminton. You just need to find a local perspective. There's always a player who's interesting for some smaller media. I'm not saying that that should be the small radio in the local, in the, in the local community where you basically have two people listening to it. It could be a newspaper, it could be a website, it could be a blogger, it could be whatever. Platforms are many today. And you need to figure out what platform would we actually like to aim at. Because is it better to have a local approach and then you get something published than have a national approach and getting nothing? In my opinion, definitely yes. So you need also to find the right journalist because a personal contact is crucial. And a good advice for me is that if you go for a younger one who's trying to get a name out of himself, it might be a good start because the younger one they strive to find the best possible ideas also to make something unique. And if you have a good story about whoever that could be, why not pitch it to the young up-and-coming journalist? Because that's also a journalist who will be working for maybe the next 50 years. And ask them what they need from you, the media. Because they might not need anything right now. But what about 2021 Olympics, 2024 Olympics? What about doing a world championship? If you have a player attending a world championship or the European championship, it might be a big local story for a local newspaper. And if you're on site, why not reach out to a local media or a 
national media maybe, to say, hi, we got this player or these two players, they're going to Tokyo, they're going to Paris, they're going to whatever tournament. What do you need from us to actually make some content out of it? They might even ask you to write the articles yourself and to send it to them and they can, it might even go online one to one. Is it worth it to put in effort? I think it is. So find the highlights and find the stars because they might not know who those actually are. And personal relations, as I said, that's crucial because a journalist receives a lot of press releases every single day and it will go right to the trash. Press releases are old-fashioned. It's never a bad thing to keep pushing. You will for sure get a no thank you. We don't need anything. No, not relevant. But at some point, you will for sure find that story which is relevant. Is it annoying to get that uh, to get that decline every single time? Yes, it is. Do you hate it? Yes. Is it not motivating? No. But will you be happy when your news actually hit the front page or maybe the back page or somewhere in between? For sure you will because that's how we highlight the sport of badminton. So the key takeaways for local communication is that you are delivering a service and if you are ha if they are happy you will for sure also be happy. You need to set up some realistic goals around your external communication and remember the big broadcast companies might not be the best solution for you guys. Local communication is a tool that is not that well known and that's a, a low priority for a lot of people which is basically a mistake and do not get disappointed for getting a no from the first 10 journalists. That's all I have for now. Thanks for joining the webinar from Badminton Europe. Remember that you can also join our Q&A session, which will happen shortly. We will inform you all on your email when that's going to happen. And then feel free to ask whatever questions you might have. Thanks for stopping by and I wish you a very nice day.